And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story. Partners in Crime. <laughs> The fog clung in little patches of moving mist to the abrupt sides of San Francisco's telegraphed hill. The bungalow on the side of the hill seemed to cling even more precariously, though it had hung there for years. Below could be seen the twinkling lights across the bay. Inside the hillside house, a strange scene was in progress. A man lay stretched inertly across a couch at the far end of the living room. Elsewhere were the unmistakable evidences of a cocktail party. And through it all, a strange, ominous silence. It could be sensed outside by the two people standing on the front porch. They looked at each other and gasped in fear. John. It smells like gas escaping. I'll knock again. You don't suppose... Please, he... John, quickly. We've got to wake him up. Chris! Hey, Chris! Chris! Open the door, Chris! Chris! You hear them, don't you, Chris? The muffled shouts, and you can smell the faint, oddly sweet odor of escaping gas, too. You don't know how long you've been lying on the couch. You only know that your muscles won't seem to tune in with your brain and respond. You try again, but it's... Oh, no use. Chris. No. Chris, you're all right. Come on now. Come uh, on. Yeah. Hey, you got me out of there. Sure, sure we did. Oh, he's all right. Oh. oh Chris, darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay, okay. Oh, that was close. Better stay with him a while, Eve. Yes, yes, of course I will. It's a good thing we came back, John. If your wife Helen hadn't forgotten her gloves. Yeah, first time it's been a good thing. The way she leaves oh, Well, things. thank goodness she did this time. Well, that's more I can do. Better get back to the car. Helen will be wondering what's happened. Scare yourself, Chris Boy. Leave these yeah. windows open like this and let the place air out. You can get that door fixed in the morning. Oh, yes. Thanks, John. I'm okay now. Good night, John. And explain to Helen why I'm staying here. Sure, sure. I will. Yeah. Chris. Well, darling, you could have been killed. Yeah. Bad accident, huh? Was it, Chris? Was it an accident? That's the second time in two weeks. The last time it was the brakes on your car. Just coincidence, and Eve. what about your partner, Fred? He was nearly killed twice last month. Chris, I, I can't believe these things are accidental. Oh, sure they are. They've got to be. I was careless about the brakes on the car, yes. Tonight, well... A little too much to drink. Maybe you left the gas jet on in the stove. I don't believe it. Well, I'm here anyway. Let's forget it. I can't forget it. You go on home now, honey. Get some sleep. You're upset, that's all. I am upset, Chris. I'm, I'm terribly upset. You'll be all right, darling. You sure? Sure. Perfectly all right. <laughs> You don't believe your own words, do you, Chris? 
Eve's suspicion that it was more than an accident is an opinion you're sure is a fact. And the things that happened to your partner, Freddie Stacy, you know they weren't accidents either. The following day, you remain at home, staying completely away from the office in which you and Freddie operate a literary agency. And that night, your girlfriend, Eve Leland, drops by again, and the two of you are having cocktails together. Eve is still apprehensive. Chris, you, you've got to do something about this. Go away, perhaps. Oh, stop it. Don't let your imagination run wild, Eve. It isn't imagination, all Chris. All right, all right. So there's a wild man loose in town trying to kill me, huh? Me, Chris Matthews, who does nothing any more precarious than run a literary agency? It's something else. Something in the air. Things that have been happening to you. Chris, I'm afraid. You expecting anyone, Chris? No, I wasn't. Better get it. Shall I go? I'll get it. <gasps> Captain Drizzt? Oh, no, 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 it can't be. Uh, sorry, Mr. Matthews. Uh, you are Chris Matthews, aren't yes, you? Yes, yes, that's right. It, you, you look like My some... brother. I look very much like my brother, Captain Driscoll. Oh. Yeah, permit me, sir. I'm uh, Lieutenant Driscoll, Canadian Intelligence Service. Oh, I see. Oh, I... I'm sorry, the shock of resemblance. Uh, come in, won't you? Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you like this. And... Oh, excuse me, miss. Oh, Lieutenant, this is my fiance, Miss Eve Leland. Eve, Lieutenant Driscoll. Miss Leland? How do you do, Lieutenant? Uh, get you a drink, Lieutenant. Scotch, maybe? Uh, perfect. Yeah. No, your brother and I, uh, the captain, uh, we were very close friends. I know. Yes, my brother, he was quite a man. He's dead? Uh, he was killed, miss. Uh, shot only last year. Uh, who did it? It's still a mystery. Um, your drink, Lieutenant. Oh, thank you. You haven't any idea why your brother was killed? Why, no, Miss Leland. Uh, his mission, perhaps, had something to do with it. He was also in intelligence. And at the time, unfortunately, he was assigned to protect the most vi valuable item being sent from France to a Canadian museum. Yes, a royal dagger of some sort, wasn't it, Lieutenant? Yeah, a uh, most valuable one, jewel-encrusted and once owned by Louis XIV. That was worth millions of francs. And it wasn't recovered? No, it wasn't, Miss. In fact, the king's dagger is the one clue to my brother's murder. I see. Oh, but please, now, that's enough of me and my problem. I, I only looked you up, Mr. Matthews, because I knew you and my brother were friends. Yes, I'm very glad you came by. I'll tell my partner, Freddie Stacy. He was with me in that little French village when, when your brother was killed. Oh, yes. You were touring together for your firm, I believe you wrote. Yeah, trying to pick up a few more rare old volumes before all of them are lost to the world. Yeah. Um, where are you staying, Lieutenant? I'd, I'd like to Oh, I'm at the cliff, but I'm afraid the length of my yes, stay... At least I know. Who can tell you might have to be here longer. Oh, meanwhile, it's been nice to just have seen you talk to you. Uh, and you, miss. Uh, I must get along now. Oh, no, no. You can have another drink. Sit a while, Lieutenant. Give me uh, at least some news to take to my partner in the morning. Oh, well, if you insist. I do. And I'll get working on a couple more drinks here. Oh, uh, three, darling. Hmm? Remember me? No. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kind of a shock, you know, Lieutenant. You're popping in here and looking so much like your brother. Yes. I know. There's a reason you're not thinking of Eve, isn't there, Chris? Yes. And the conversation for the remainder of the evening holds little of your attention. So you're glad when they both leave. Next morning at the office, when you walk in on your partner, Freddy, and confront him with the news... Oh, Freddy, last night our past came calling. Huh? Captain Driscoll's brother. Looking so much like him, I almost thought I was seeing a ghost. What did he want? What's he doing here? He claims it's official business. I hope it has nothing to do with the king's dagger. We've got to get rid of it as soon as it arrives. We've waited long enough. I wonder if we can ever wait long enough. Well, your idea of laying It low... was as much your idea. Well, arguing isn't going to get us anywhere, Freddy. You don't seem to be worried. What is it, Chris? Some idea turning around on that conniving brain of yours? Some way of making me the fall guy? Blood pressure, Freddy. 
You were always too excitable. And with good reason. Having you as a partner, a partner in crime. A partner in murder. Remember that, Freddy boy. It keeps us close. Close. And where are we? Where are we is right. We haven't even got that little diamond-studded weapon in our possession. You know it's arriving in a few days. If we can trust your sailor friend, Higgins. I told you we can. I told you a dozen times. Oh, Freddy, let's stop this. Look where it's leading us. Feeling this way. Hating each other so that we could... What do you mean by that? I mean the two accidents I've had this week. Well, I've had two myself. What are you implying? That I... That I'd best get rid of you. Before you get rid of me, Freddy. Nonsense. You talk like a fool. Do I? Do I really? You know, I've I've had a terribly strong hunch about something. Yes? A hunch that one of us, one or the other, will be quite dead when Higgins' ship pulls into San Francisco Harbor. Don't say that. I can't help it, Freddy. It's on my mind. The thought that one of us will be dead. I wonder which one. Don't you, Freddy? <laughs> How fast will your car pick up? Pick up? Just try a tank full of signal ethyl and see. How easily will your car climb a hill? Climb a hill? Just try a tank full of signal ethyl and see. You'll see the peppiest, most thrilling performance your car is capable of. After all, signal ethyl, the premium grade of signal's famous go farther gasoline, is a true super fuel. Engineered to bring out the best in any car of any age. Engineered to put real get-up-and-go under your toe. Engineered to float you smoothly and high over hills that make other cars complain and shift. The kind of driving that's really fun. So, just for fun, why not treat your car to a tank full of signal ethyl and see. See for yourself. toying with your partner, Freddy, were you, Chris, when you made your grim observation that one or the other of you would be dead? No, you believe it, because you think now that that's the only way it can be. You no longer trust one another. You watch each other like a pair of sentries, fearful that at the least expected moment the other will strike. That's the way it is for the next few days after you talk with Freddy about the brother of the man you two murdered. You decide your partner must die soon. And you must take over the Louis XIV dagger yourself. Dispose of it as quickly and as quietly as possible. That's why you keep in constant contact with the steamship office. Call them again when you notice in the papers that Higgins' ship is listed under delayed arrival. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'd like to get some shipping information, please. Uh, What information do you wish, sir? Uh, there's a ship, the Algonquin, due in tomorrow. It's listed as delayed in today's paper, and I wonder if you... sir? I'm checking. Oh, oh, yes, there's been a change in its cars. Uh, repairs or something, sir. The Algonquin is stopping at San Pedro before it puts in here. Just a short delay, sir. Thanks. As you hang up and leave the bungalow, an idea suddenly occurs to you, doesn't it, Chris? Yes. And as you drive downtown, a plan begins to take shape in your mind. Before going to the office, you stop and send a wire to Seaman Al Higgins, care of his ship in San Pedro, asking him to phone you. Just before lunch, you're at your desk when the phone rings. Hello? Is that you, Mr. Matthews? Yes? Alfie Higgins here, Governor. What's wrong? Oh, Higgins. Uh, nothing's wrong, nothing at all. Well, now, that's a relief to hear, that is. How did everything go? Smooth, Governor. No trouble at all. Oh, good. I hope this here delay isn't going to cause you any hardship, Governor. As a matter of fact, it does make things uh, sort of awkward. But there's a chance we'll be shoving off late tonight or first thing in the morning. I'm afraid that's no good, Higgins. Uh, Now, you'd better wait for me there. Oh? I'll leave right away and meet you in San Pedro tonight. Well, it might mean I'll have to jump ship. Oh, you won't mind that, will you? (laughs) Oh, no, I won't mind it a bit, Governor. (laughs) Where'll I find you? You just ask for Alvy Higgins. 
They all know me along the waterfront. Now, let's fix a time and a place. Well, there's a little hotel not far from now, the docks. Now, wait. I've got a better idea. Um, a friend of mine has a, a beach house in Redondo. Why don't we meet there? Nice and quiet. We won't be disturbed. Whatever you say, Governor. Well, the address is 81374 Coast Road. 817... Uh, no, 81374. You'd better write it down. I'll remember no, it. No, write it down. All right, oh. 81374 Coast Road. Got it? All right. I should be there around midnight. Midnight it is. Oh, and Governor. Yes? You'll have my money, eh? 10000 Cash. That was the understanding. All right. You'll get what's coming to you, Higgins. Don't worry. Darling. Hello, Eve. Oh, I didn't expect to see you at this time of day. Well, I'm leaving town, Eve. What? No, no, wait. I don't mean for good. Just a short vacation. Oh, don't scare me like that, darling. Just that I have to get away for a few days. But I'd take your advice and sort of get hold of myself. Got nerves, you know, that affair at the bungalow the other night. It's, uh, well, it's sort of catching up to me. Oh, of course, darling. I understand. And, uh... I was wondering, Eve, you know that beach house of yours in Redondo? That's mm -hmm. uh, that's still for rent, isn't it? Chris, that would be a wonderful place for you. It, it's so quiet and peaceful. The, the ocean at your front door. Why, well, we could drive down there tonight. Well, if, if you don't mind, Eve, I'd, uh, I'd rather be alone for the first few days. You understand. Mm. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. When are you leaving? Right away. My stuff's packed and the car's downstairs. All right, I'll get the housekeeper. for you. Oh, thanks. Oh, and Eve, mm -hmm. I'd rather you told no one where I am. Not at first, anyway. Oh? Well, I'm thinking about Freddy. You know how he worries about the firm. Something would come up at the office, he'd be on the phone pestering me. I just don't want to be bothered. All right, darling. I won't tell a soul. It's regrettable, isn't it, Chris, having to give up a girl like Eve? But she just doesn't fit in with your plans, does she? You've made up your mind, know exactly what you're going to do. Once you take care of Alvy Higgins, you'll drive on into Mexico with the King's Dagger, contact the interested buyers from there. After you've received your money, you could drop out of sight, and neither Freddy nor Eve will ever find you. You make excellent time on the road between San Francisco and Los Angeles, arriving at Redondo Beach an hour and a half ahead of schedule. You're eager to get it over with, aren't you, Chris? So you drive on to San Pedro on the chance that Higgins is still aboard his ship. Hello, you up there. Yeah? What, are you, what can I do for you? I'm looking for Alvy Higgins. Is he aboard? No. Went ashore a little while ago. He did, huh? Yeah. Don't know when he'll be back... Said something about having a big deal cooking over in Redondo. <laughs> okay, thanks. You've missed him, Chris, and that means you'll have to go back to Redondo and wait for him. You walk back to your car, and as you get in, you sense a sudden movement behind you, and then the cold, unmistakable feel of a gun in the back of your head. Hello, Chris. Uh Ready? Surprised? <laughs> you see, I took the trouble to call the steamship line, too. And when you didn't come back with the office this afternoon, I got a hunch you'd be headed this way. Look, Freddy, can't we talk to... Sorry, this no deal. This, as they so often say, is the end of the line for you, old man. Start the car. Oh, Freddy, listen Start to... Start the car! Your heart is pounding in your throat as you drive along the dark, deserted streets of the waterfront district. The panic within you mounts, doesn't it, Chris? Your mind spinning furiously, desperately seeking a way to outwit Freddy. All right, Chris, stop here. Now, get out. Now, Freddy, wait a minute. Move. 
Go on, straight ahead out there on the dock and keep in the shadow. How'll you have it, Chris? In the back of the head? Just like you gave it to Captain Driscoll? Freddie, listen to me. Listen, you can have the dagger, my share of the money. If I let you live. And huh? the firm, I'll, I'll get out. I'll leave that to you, too. Oh, there'd be too many complications, too many papers to sign. You might change your mind. No, I swear no, I won't. No, no. It's much simpler this way, old man. A well-placed bullet and our partnership is dissolved. All right. This is far enough. Now, turn around. I'll turn around, all right. You lunge with a suddenness that takes Freddy completely by surprise. Then your fist catches him full on the jaw. He staggers back, crashes into some empty crates. In an instant, you're on him. All right, Freddy. I've got the gun now. So you, so you have, old man. So you have. Now get up. Chris, old man. Don't move. I... I don't suppose you'd be interested in little proposition. <laughs> no, I don't suppose you would be. You don't have much time, Freddy. As soon as that freight train is close enough to cover the sound of the shot, you're going to get the bullet you promised me. Me. <laughs> It's all over quickly, isn't it, Chris? You stand there as the train rumbles past, staring at the lifeless body of your partner. Then you slip the gun into your pocket and hurry to your car. A half an hour later, you're at the beach house in Redondo. It's only a few minutes after 12, but you're pacing the floor nervously, occasionally stopping to glance out the window. Higgins is late, isn't he, Chris? And as the minutes drag by, you begin to wonder if something has happened to him. Then finally, you hear a car pull up outside. As you hurry to the door, your hand slips around the gun in your pocket. Evening, Governor. Well, well, Higgins, I've been waiting for you. Come in. Hey, look, Governor, I... Here now, what's the idea of the gun? Oh, I'll explain it all to you. Inside, Mr. Higgins. <laughs> When you need gasoline or a quart of oil, a free map, or any of the numerous other services and conveniences for which you rely on service stations, have you ever wondered what you would do if service stations were few and far between, or if they operated limited hours like banks? Fortunately, however, you don't have to worry about this because there are 200,000 service stations throughout the states to deliver the 40 billion gallons of gasoline Americans now use per year and 15,000 independent oil marketing companies working in free competition are constantly striving to furnish ever finer petroleum products at lower prices. As a result of this free competition, although prices of so many things have skyrocketed, gasoline itself today costs no more than it did 25 years ago. Only gasoline taxes are higher. But the quality of today's gasoline is so much better, two gallons now go as far as three used to. I tell you these facts because throughout America this week is officially known as Oil Progress Week. But when you consider that U.S. oil companies spend over $100 million on research each year and oil scientists have created more than 8,000 new inventions in the last five years, it would be much more accurate to say every week in free America is Oil Progress Week. <laughs> Your plan has met with great success, hasn't it, Chris? Yes, things have turned out much better than you believe possible. Your partner, Freddy Stacy, is out of the way for good. And now all you have to do is get the king's jewel dagger from Higgins, rid yourself of him as you did Freddy, and then go to Mexico. Once you're safely across the border, you're certain that you can complete the sale of your rare and highly valuable merchandise. With Freddy dead, you can then return to the United States, enjoy your new wealth with ease. One hundred thousand dollars. Out of money, isn't it, Chris? The ancient item will bring that, you know. One hundred thousand. 
all yours. All right, Higgins. Suppose we start with the dagger. Hand it over. I ain't got it. What? I ain't got it. Oh, you're lying. Hold still. Well. Here now. Half a mo. What's this? You give me that. That's mine. An envelope. Money. Lots of money. Where'd you get this, Higgins? Mr. Freddy. I give him that blasted dagger or whatever he... it was. You what? That's right. I, I ran into him just as I was leaving the ship tonight. I told him I was expecting you, but he said you couldn't make it. You gave Freddy the dagger. Well, I got to thinking about it after I left him that perhaps he was double-crossing you, so I decided to come out here and see if you were waiting. And it with him all the time. If they haven't found the body yet, there's a chance I can body? get it. Yes, Higgins. I killed Freddy with his own gun. Now I'm going to have to kill you with it, too. <laughs> now, look I'll here, Governor. I'll need 10,000 of yours, Higgins, in case the police have already found Freddy's body in the dagger. Now move. Move, I said. We're going to take a nice, quiet little walk along the beach. Hold it, buddy. Huh? Uh, Here from the sheriff's office. Uh, drop yes. that gun. Drop it, yes. I said. Uh, 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 there. That's better. Lord, love a duck. This is one time old Alfie Higgins is happy to see the law. This bloke was going to kill me. Uh, that's the way it looked to us. How... Uh, how do you gents happen to get here? A man named Fred Stacy was shot to death over in San Pedro tonight. When we searched his body, we found this jewel dagger, all wrapped up in this paper. Just plain wrapping paper. But there's an address scribbled on it. 81374 Coast Road. That's this place right here. Higgins, did you... That's right. I wrote the address down. Just like me, you asked me to. Remember, Governor? You insisted upon it. And, oh, blimey, Alfie Higgins obliged. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you'll remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life. Possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as the Whistler, Larry Dobkin, Michael Ann Barrett, Ted Osborne, Ben Wright, and Herbert Litton. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian Jean Doe. Music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler entitled Alias Mr. Alden, a story of intrigue and excitement set against the fabulous background of Singapore. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>